You know, not a lot of horror movies are willing to dust off the whole death by poop thing, but here we are. Hello and welcome to Rotted Review of the Day, and it is Franchise Friday, and we are continuing where we left off last Friday with the Sleepaway Camp series, and today it is Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers, made in 1988. I'm going to be switching up the format just a little bit here. Uh, Typically, I would kind of uh, give a general synopsis and then go through the categories one by one uh, until they're all fleshed out and then kind of give a final summary of this. And I don't know. I kind of I I like it. I'm not necessarily dishing it entirely, uh, but I feel like uh, perhaps it was just making things a little bit too repetitive in terms of uh, just the, the rhythm and the beats of the uh, videos that are released every day. When you have that many of them released, uh, you tend to find those repetitive patterns a little bit more. And uh, I kind of want to just play this a little bit more fast and loose. Uh, I still have the categories. I'm going to go ahead and throw them all up here, but I'm also going to go ahead and throw up all the scores at once and just kind of freestyle this a little bit more than I usually do. I have notes still, and I'll be reading off of them, but uh, for the most part, I'll just be generally having a conversation about what I thought of this movie. And what I thought of this one is... Well, if you'll recall last Friday, um, I enjoyed the first Sleepaway Camp movie more than I thought that I would. Uh, I mean, you you talk about cheesy 80s camper slasher horror movie. You don't expect to find a whole lot of depth to it. And what I found was that there is a reason that the Internet is kind of uh, renewed with some buzz about the Sleepaway Camp series. And I had moderate (laughs) hopes for Sleepaway Camp 2 or any subsequent sequels. Uh, I mean, I had high hopes, but I also had realistic expectations. I know how sequels of uh, especially 80s horror franchises tend to turn out. Uh, And what I found with this one was it wasn't as bad as it definitely could have been, considering that it was a sequel. Um, Ultimately, it was just very different. Um, And I think it really kind of depends on your tastes of slashers, whether or not you'll like this one, this definitely had a lot more comedic tones to it. Um, This follows the character of Angela. She is back many years after the events of the first Sleepaway Camp uh, series, and you find that uh, she has undergone, uh, you know, mental treatment and, uh, you know, electroshock therapy and all sorts of drugs and even completed her surgery and uh, is now back as a camp counselor at uh, generally the same camp, just with a different name. And uh, (laughs) being a counselor, uh, there's not really a progression of going back down the rabbit hole. She pretty much just starts out slashery, loony, uh, you know, right from the get-go. It's not implied that she... Uh, slips, it's implied that she just fooled the doctors and got the job at the camp. Uh, Because uh, with the camp and with the campers and with the other uh, counselors and whatever, uh, she is basically wanting to have the perfect camp experience. Puritanical and clean and kumbaya and finger painting and canoeing and that's it and any moral degradation of that picturesque envisionment in her head warrants a brutal killing uh and that's ultimately what happens is one by one a lot of campers will uh you know smoke pot or have sex or what have you or just generally be disrespectful in one way or another and well your time's up and uh when uh, this this has also has a fairly interesting, but it, I think it really stretched the suspension of disbelief pretty darn high. Um, <laughs> instead of having an all-out rampage, uh, this movie is set over the course of four or five full days, and every time a camper goes missing, Angela, as a can- uh, counselor, just says, uh, "Oh yeah, I you know they were misbehaving, they were unhappy, so I sent them home. I had their parents pick them up," and that seems to satisfy the administration enough. I mean, it irks them, you know, that's money down the drain. And by the end, it reaches a crescendo there. But uh, ultimately, it's it's satisfactory enough that it's not looked into any further uh, with any tone of uh, fo- serious follow through. 
Uh, but uh, regardless, campers start going missing, and by the time the movie is finished, uh, it, the camp is basically a shell of what it once was with mostly empty cots. It's uh, it's pretty ludicrous, and ludicrous is kind of the name of the game with this one. Uh, you know, there's a lot of winking to the camera. There's a lot of one-liners as kills happen, and it's just generally a much, much different tone than the first film. Another thing that's different is the actual actress that played Angela. Uh, Felissa Rose is now replaced by Pamela Springsteen. And as one commenter on uh, my review of Sleepaway Camp said uh, that they prefer Pamela Springsteen. Um, I am kind of on uh, a middle ground here. I think it really depends on the tone that you're wanting. If you're talking about a somewhat serious uh, dramatic, slashery, I mean, yeah, cheesy, but still uh, dramatic. And I, I think the, the dark undertones really is what uh, I'm talking about here. Uh, then I really prefer Felissa Rose's performance. But if we're just talking uh, one-liners and brutal slash em ups and just having fun with it, then yeah, Pamela Springsteen definitely fit the bill a bit better. And it, it's kind of buyer's choice as to which you would prefer. Um, Although I really didn't dislike this movie, I would say that I preferred Felissa Rose and I preferred the first film and its tones and its storyline and its uh, uh, just general vibe overall. I, 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 I'm not as much of a fan of this one. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I will say that there is a place for this. And I was watching this and I was thinking about it and I wanted to... My first instinct was to actually rate it lower than I did, and then I had to kind of remind myself, wait a minute, Jack Frost 2 exists. And that's really, so far, what I've seen and what I've reviewed on the uh, Rotted Review channel here, kind of the pinnacle of when a sequel completely slips the disc and goes for the wink-to-the-camera comedic route that just doesn't work. It's way too ramped up. It uh, betrays the characters, and I would say that this one does that, but w with a way more of a subtle gradient. It is definitely not to that degree, and because of that, I can forgive it a whole lot more. This was just a tonal shift from one to the other. And if I had to guess, I'm going to say that the rest of the series follows suit. This is going to be uh, built off of the Sleepaway Camp 2 vibe from here, but, you know, we'll see. But that's about it. Uh, you know, plot of 6, intent of 20, acting of 13, uh, technical of 19, and a total score of 58. The technical, that's actually one thing I wanted to bring up, is the kills in this one were actually pretty good, pretty clever, and pretty well done from a practical effects standpoint. Uh, this definitely had, and uh, my intro to this video alluded to this, uh, but this had one of the most... Uh, uh, disgusting kills that I can remember in a slasher film. I'm not too affected by gore, but that one had shades of uh, uh, Schindler's List-esque moment within a cheesy, comedic uh, slasher camper movie, and it just was really... Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, so there's something to be said for that. I, I, I enjoy films that make me feel something, and this one definitely made me feel something, especially with that moment there. So take that for what you will. Uh, ultimately, would I recommend this film? Mm, uh, you know what? I would say yes. If you like the first Sleepaway Camp movie, then I would say definitely give this one a shot. Um, if it's not to your taste, then I, I don't know. I mean, we'll see if the next movies follow suit. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll actually be pro probably evaluating them whether... You know, this is more akin to the first one or the second one. But uh, I, I would say I'm not going to talk anybody out of watching this film. Uh, this is not one that I would uh, advise against. It's just uh, I don't know if I would really rally people behind it like I would the first film. So take that for what you will. That's uh, my review of 1988 Sleepaway Camp 2 on Happy Campers. Thank you very much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotten.